Good morning, it's James. I do hope and pray this message finds you and your loved ones peaceful, thriving, and well. I am deeply grateful to lay eyes on you today, and I do hope and pray this message. I can do it justice. I want this message to land squarely in your heart, and then I want you to take this message and take it out in the streets. You know, given the fact that we've shared a lot over the last few weeks about some of the stats on burnout, was it 77% of the world right now to varying degrees is burned out. It's up 10% literally in just the last few months. So that speaks volumes to how we may not even be aware of just how tired we are, how unpresent we are. Is that a word, unpresent, lack of presence? You know what I mean? And it's relationship to mediocrity. Now, the word mediocrity is a very, very powerful word in relationship to what it means and extremely disempowering in relationship to how it can show up in our lives. Mediocrity comes from the Latin media ochris, which means deciding to dwell in the valley of average, like making a choice to be stuck in a place where you know you're not living up to your potential. But it's not because you really want to. It's because you're tired. It's because you feel like you've lost your way. And I think a lot of us right now are feeling that way. So I wanna share with you five things that um, can be a great way to sort of reinitiate or reignite our mornings and really carry us into the day with some things I thought would be fun, uh, hopefully exciting in the sense that you can go, oh my gosh, I've never done that before. This could be really amazing. And yes, there's a lot of good science behind all five of these things as well. So if there's someone in your life and that that someone is you, I hope you really embrace one or all five of these. Or if you know someone who's struggling, just say, listen, I, I saw this video with this delusional optimist, James, and I just wanted to, and you know what? I am optimistic. I remain optimistic. And some would say it's delusional. Uh, Mayo said moderate delusional optimism is a superpower. And I think we should all be embracing that predisposition. So number one, Wake up in the morning, first thing we should do versus saying, good God morning, we want to say good morning God or good morning light, good morning universe, good morning nature, good morning whatever it is that you see as the greater expanse in your life and how you can absolutely lean into that message. Affirmations literally help to push the prefrontal cortex of our mind into a space of creativity and possibility and zeal and courage. It really is a wake up call. And interesting enough, if we use our name versus like, this is James, good morning, God, or good morning, God, James, whatever, just inserting your name literally shows to be so much more powerful and say, I am going to have an amazing day. I am going to do this. I am this. I am, yes, is powerful. But interesting enough, when you put James in front of I am or Susan or Bill or Bob or Barbara or please, <laughs> Michelle, um, go ahead and just use that because it literally has been shown neurochemically to open us up that much more to possibility. So use your name. Number two, sweat your prayers. Any kind of movement gets a neurochemical cascade happening in you, as you, through you, and literally becomes a buoy to carry you through the inevitable trouble, the inevitable challenges, the stuff that's going to come at us because the world today has so much stuff. You can't hide from it. We don't want to hide from it. We want to look for ways that we can move into it, overcome it, show others it's possible to be an overcomer, someone who doesn't cower to the stuff that's out there, the dark stuff that we literally rise above it and we out love the hate. We outshine the darkness. Sweat your prayers. Just move your body with zeal and gratitude. Number three, crushing cortisol. This is part of the morning work that we all have. Cortisol levels, the stress hormone rises first thing in the morning to its peak level sometime between 4 a.m. and 10 a.m. And we want to do all that we can to give cortisol a job to do. So affirmations, healthy breakfast, moving our body, and simply being present. So crush cortisol with presence. Simply give yourself to be in the moment. And when you're doing good things for yourself, absolutely be present for them. Because that self-efficacy, that witnessing of your character and your integrity following through literally helps cortisol levels to go down. It's amazingly powerful. Number four, a superhero showing. That is when we decide that the work that we do for ourselves can be a beacon of hope and demonstration and example to everyone in the world who has the blessing of laying eyes on you. 
you get an opportunity to be a superhero and doing it in such a way that you drop the ego, you raise the light. And don't be afraid to go public with how you love, how you demonstrate it with courage and compassion and conviction, because that is what the world needs, because emotional contagion is something people will follow, and they love to follow hope, love, and light. And lastly, with every doorway that you pass through today, every threshold, every breath, whatever you can see as a way you can stick to this, really honor this, what would love do now? Ask yourself throughout the day, I use the thresholds of doorways to do it. What would love do now? And my goal, my intention is when I pass through that doorway is to live the answer of what love does. What would you do if you were love? And how would you demonstrate it, express it, and circulate it in you and as you? Disrupting mediocrity. Climbing out of the valley of average. Have an awesome day. Thank you for being you and thank you for doing the beautiful work that you do in the world. I see you, I appreciate you, and I love you. Much love, bye for now.